Hey guys, it's Michael here from FlySight. I'm going to create some audio files today for wingsuiters, so I thought I would kill two birds with one stone and uh, create a tutorial about it. So, if you want to create audio files for the FlySight, the first thing you have to do is download Audacity. Uh, you can find that on the internet. Uh, if you search for Audacity, the source large link will show up right up at the top. And if you click on the download link, uh, It'll download an installer, install it as usual, and it should show up kind of like this. If you open Audacity, this is what it looks like. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is you want to set your project rate to 7812 hertz. So that's down in the bottom left. I'm going to type in 7812, enter, and we're done. The next thing you want to do is you want to check your source, and that's up at the top here. So I've got my Yeti microphone. And I'm recording a mono recording, just one channel, uh, because the fly set itself has only one channel. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll test the settings to make sure everything's good. So if I hit the record button, testing, one, two. And we'll play that back, testing, one, two. So the volume is good. We have a mono recording, 78, 12 hertz. We're good to go. I'll click the little X to, uh, to delete that. Now we'll record our actual samples. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say the, the different samples that I want to say all in a row, and we'll split it up and equalize everything later. I'll go ahead and do that. Time, distance, speed. Now we've got our samples. The next thing we want to do is we want to amplify them. Uh, the fly site only has 8-bit audio. Uh, there's not a whole lot of volume there, so we want to make the most use of it. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to blow the sound out a little bit past the limits. Uh, and that'll decrease the quality of the sound a little bit, but it'll give us better volume. Uh, so I'm going to select everything by clicking and hitting Control A. And then I'll go to Effect and Amplify. And I'm going to try an amplification of maybe 6 dB to start with. In order to click OK, I'm going to have to allow clipping. This is because we're actually amplifying the sound past the limits. So if I say OK, now we can test the volume. Time, distance, speed. That's pretty good. So we're clipping just a little bit, which is fine with me. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to do a noise reduction. So we're going to try to get rid of the background noise in these spaces between. Uh, with Audacity, the first thing we want to do is select a section of noise, and then we'll go to Effect, Noise Reduction. And right at the top here, we can click Get Noise Profile, and that'll tell Audacity what the noise looks like. And then the next thing we want to do is do Control A to select everything, and we'll go back into Noise Reduction, and we can reduce the noise. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to increase the noise reduction to its maximum and then we'll click OK. So it looks good. We'll hit play to listen to it. Time, distance, speed. That's fairly good. Uh, so make sure we have everything selected and we're going to use the sound finder to automatically detect where each of our samples are. So under the analyze menu uh, down at the bottom is sound finder. And we're going to need to give it a level. Uh, everything below it is silence, everything above it is sound. I'm going to make something something fairly low. I'm going to actually go to minus 36 dB. Um, and we'll see how that goes. If we don't get the samples we like, we can always bump that up or down. Uh, I'm going to do half a second between sound samples. Uh, we didn't wait a full second between, so I need to reduce that. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my before and after uh, margins to 0 0.05 seconds instead of 0.1 seconds. And let's give that a go. OK, so we can see we got two out of three. Uh, but that last one, I don't think that's actually what we're looking for. And we can click on it and click play just to see. Speed. Yeah, so we got some noise in there. Uh, so I'm going to close the label track and we're going to try this again. So I'll select everything, go to Analyze, Sound Finder. 
the noise level was good, we just don't have enough time between samples. So I'm going to try a quarter of a second, and then we'll repeat that. That looks a lot better. So we have spurious samples at the end, but I think we actually have three good samples, and we can test each of them. Time. Distance. What I'm doing here is I'm clicking on the label, and that selects the automatically detected sample. Speed. That's awesome. So we have three good samples. The next thing we want to do is we want to export those samples. So I'll click on the first one, which is our time sample. And I'll go File and Export Selected Audio. In the Save As Type, you want to do Other Uncompressed Files. And then if you click on the Options button, we actually want Wave and Unsigned 8-Bit PCM. Then click OK, and I'll save this one as time. And we don't really need any metadata. And then I'll do the same thing for distance and speed. We can do one last check. Uh, if we go to the desktop, we have our three files, and I can double click on each one just to make sure the sample actually sounds good. Time, distance, speed. Those all seem good. So in order to use these, we would just copy those three files into the audio folder on the fly site. Uh, and once they're there, we can use just the time, distance, and speed labels uh, inside the configuration file the same way as we would use 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. That's it. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, let me know.